looking for magic carps at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code lvd for a 15 percent discount on orders over ten dollars while supporting the channel at the same time hello and welcome to another magic arena gameplay video today we're taking a look at a junt sacrifice deck featuring a full playset of one of the brawl commanders corvold fake cursed king but a totally reasonable card to play in standard as well as a 5 mana 4-4 legendary dragon with flying and whenever Corvold enters a battlefield or attacks we have to sacrifice another permanent and whenever we sacrifice the permanent we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Corvold and draw a card so our deck is really built around the sacrifice synergies with Corvold and uh, drawing a lot of extra cards with him so let's take a look at our entire deck list at one mana we've got our full playset of gilded goose as a nice mana accelerator and then later in the game can also make food tokens for us to sacrifice to corvold so very synergistic in our deck then at two mana we also have the full playset of paradise root to further help us ramp into corvold and our six mana liliana planeswalker so having a bit of extra ramp helps out and the mana fixing from Paradise Root and Gilded Goose also comes in handy. Then we also have the full playset of Once Upon a Time, since most of the payoff cards in this deck are creatures, so in the early game we can make sure to find one of our mana accelerators, Gilded Goose or Paradise Root, and in the late game we can look for Corvold and the other curve toppers in the deck, so helps out with the consistency. We also have a full playset of Golden Egg, which is a two-mana artifact, draws a card when it enters the battlefield, and also counts as food. And we do have some food synergies in the deck, of course we can use it with Gilded Goose as well, to help uh, generate additional mana. And we also have two copies of Wicked Wolf, which we will get to in a second, which also synergizes with food. Otherwise, just kind of a cantripping artifact that we can easily sacrifice to Corvold to draw more cards. And then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Murderous Rider as our removal spell of choice, destroying target creature or planeswalker at instant speed at the cost of 2 life with the swift end adventure. And then afterwards we still get the 2-3 life linking zombie knight. Then we also have the full playset of Mayhem Devil which also has a ton of synergy in this deck as a 3-3 creature that says whenever a player sacrifices a permanent Mayhem Devil deals 1 damage to any target. And we've got a ton of sacrifice synergies between cards like Golden Egg that we can sacrifice the food tokens with Gilded Goose, we've got our Fetch Land as well, uh, Fabled Passage which also counts with Mayhem Devil, and basically every one of these more expensive cards in our deck has some sort of built-in sacrifice synergy to go with Mayhem Devil, so the damage can really start adding up. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Vraska, Golgari Queen, which can destroy target a non-land permanent with convert mana cost 3 or less with the minus 3, so it can take out annoying planeswalkers like Oko or Teferi. The plus 2 can help us sacrifice another permanent, and if we do we gain one life and draw a card, so that's another way to maybe help us trigger Mayhem Devil or draw cards with Corvold in play. And then if we ever get to the ultimate, that's another way to potentially win the game as well. We have two copies of Wicked Wolf, could potentially play more since it is a very powerful card, but we don't have the three mana Oko Planeswalker, we just have to rely on the Gilded Goose and a couple Golden Eggs instead to help make the Wicked Wolf indestructible until end of turn and put a plus one plus one counter on it, otherwise still a very solid card for mana 3-3 that can find an opposing creature when it enters the battlefield, so shines against opposing aggro decks. And then we also have two copies of Rankle, Master of Pranks, as a very versatile creature. Four mana for a 3-3 legendary fairy rogue with flying and haste. And when Rankle deals combat damage to a player, we can choose any number of each player discards a card, each player loses a life and draws a card, and each player sacrifices a creature. We don't have a ton of sacrifice fodder to necessarily sacrifice to Rankle's ability. Sometimes we're okay sacrificing a Paradise Druid or a Gilded Goose. But for the most part, the discard mode can be useful if we're empty-handed and uh, every now and then we're okay just sacrificing Rankle itself to the ability if we need to take out an opposing threat. And uh, of course the flexibility of having all these different modes can definitely come in handy. Then we've got our full playset of Corvold, which is kind of the main appeal of this deck as a very powerful card draw engine with all the other sacrifice synergies and a card that can also just close out the game very quickly in one or two attacks. And then last but not least, we have two copies of Liliana Dreadhorde General as a very powerful curve topper, saying whenever a creature we control dies, draw a card. We can make a 2-2 zombie token with the plus one. The minus four forces each player to sacrifice two creatures, so especially powerful if we don't have anything in play and the opponent has two creatures out. 
and then the minus 9 ultimate, which we can reach pretty quickly, is also usually game winning. Now we could also be playing Garruk at 6 mana, which is also pretty synergistic in our deck, as we don't mind sacrificing a couple wolf tokens to Korvold to add loyalty to Garruk to get the ultimate going. So we could potentially play Garruk at 6 mana as well, or maybe play a mix of Lilian and Garruk. Both are totally fine additions. Now one card I'm not playing is Cauldron's Familiar, which can also be quite powerful in these sacrifice decks, especially combined with the Witch's Oven. We're trying to go a little bit bigger with Korvold, but of course uh, Korvold also has a ton of great synergies with Cauldron's Familiar and Witch's Oven, so we could potentially try and fit those in the deck as well, but we wanted to make room for more ramp creatures with the Paradise Root to make sure we can get to 5 and 6 mana for Korvold and Liliana, and we've got enough going on already that we don't necessarily need to introduce the Cauldron Familiar and uh, Witch's Oven to the deck as well, but that's another potential way to explore these uh, various sacrifice synergies. Then taking a look at the mana base, we've already discussed the four Fabled Passages, which were great with Mayhem Devil and Corvold. We can just sacrifice this to draw a card with Corvold in play and add a plus one plus one counter to it. Then we've got a bunch of dual lands, four Stomping Ground. We've got two Temple of Malady as a nice Scry land, four Overgrown Tombs, two copies of Blood Crypts, and then a bunch of basic lands to search up with Fabled Passage, three forests, one mountain, and two swamps, as well as two copies of Castle Lockthwain as another nice card draw engine for the late game to draw a card and lose life equal to the number of cards in our hand, so usually want to activate that when empty-handed. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with uh, pretty solid hands, Goose and Paradise Root to help us ramp. I guess the castle's a little awkward as we don't have a swamp. So... Hoping to pick up a swamp or another untapped land in the meantime. Could have also opted to play castle tapped to then play paradise root on two. This has a bit more upside if we get lucky and draw the swamp. Now I could just play the golden egg which at least is food for the goose. Yeah that's probably fine. Kind of just cantrip. Alright, Temple, we'll play that instead. And don't really need a 6 mana card at this point. Looking for... Swamp, another untapped land. Second Castle, not so much. Let's just play Druids. Are we up against Simic Flash? Looks like it. So, Paradise Root gets quenched. Alright, so I could play one of my 4 drops at the cost of food. I think I would rather wait. Just play another castle, say go, and then make a food end of turn with a goose. Opponent's gonna try and bounce the goose. Could just keep up Murder Strider, but opponent's gonna play all their creatures at instant speed anyway, so might as well just make a food. And then we'll probably have to slog our way through a bunch of counter spells from my opponents. For now, probably better off just replaying the goose and an end of turn cast once upon a time. I could once upon a time now, if I were to draw land I can play it, but I don't have many tap lands left in my deck. So there's a Brazen Borrower, could Murder Strider it, might want to keep this to kill a Ambusher instead, because I can pretty easily kill Borrower with like a Wicked Wolf as well, although I guess it does block Rankle. It's an interesting position. I think I'm just looking to let that resolve. And I could have cast a once upon a time end of turn if I wanted to make sure it resolves. But I'm okay if they counter this as opposed to something else. And against the blue green flash deck, it's often advised to just have as much action as possible to eventually run them out of counter spells. But I could also just take a land 
since I do have Castle Lockthwain to refuel. So maybe that's an argument for just taking the land anyway. Yeah, let's grab a swamp. And draw forests, so... I want to get to a point where I can potentially cast two spells on the same turn. For now, I guess I'm planning to just Murder Shrider the Brazen Borrower and make another food with Gilded Goose. That's a good way to kind of use two things at the same time instead of running into a counter spell. Cutthroats, so now I have the option of either killing Brazen Borrower or Cutthroat with the Murder Shrider. Probably better off killing the Borrower for now. So response will do that. Take two from the cutthroats. And make a food. Now I don't have a clean answer to a potential Night pack ambusher from my opponents, which could be an issue. I think the plan for now is to play Murder Strider, kind of hope they counter it, and then I will still be able to play Wicked Wolf or Rankle afterwards. Murder Strider resolves. So, opponent could play an ambusher. If I pass here, so in a way, forcing them to counter could be beneficial. Otherwise, I can go for once upon a time or make food with a goose. I guess I don't really mind if Rankle gets countered, so maybe that's the play here. Just run out Rankle. And then if they want to counter Rankle, they won't be able to play their Ambusher. Alright, Sabotage gets Rankle. Because I think both of these are going to be more valuable than Rankle. So now we're at the point where we can cast two impactful spells in the same turn, which is how we need to kind of beat these uh, expensive counter spells from our opponent. Of course, they could also have like Quench plus a three mana counter now. But uh, let's lead with a Mayhem Devil which would be quite powerful if it resolved with the uh, Gilded Goose and all the food tokens we have. But our opponent does let it resolve. So now I think I'm okay attacking with Murder Strider. If they were to flash in an Ambusher, I can still easily take it out. And I'm okay trading for Cutthroats. Opponent goes for the trade. Alright, they're gonna attempt to bounce Mayhem Devil. So now in response, what I can do is... Make a green. One damage to the Cutthroat. I want to make sure to do this before... The Cutthroat gets a plus one counter. Now I'll sacrifice... Another food. And then, even if they have another instant to cast here, I can still sack the egg to sack a third thing, and otherwise I can still cast my Once Upon a Time. Alright, they're gonna Brazen Borrower the Murder Strider too. So yeah, let's sack the egg to gain three, or I guess just making one mana to cast Once Upon a Time is better. Since I don't think I need a life. So Cutthroat dies, I get to cast Once Upon a Time, which finds probably the Blood Crypts, since I'm going to have a bunch of cards in hand now, and I just need the mana to deploy them. And then I get to play Time Blood Crypts and say go. So, that didn't go too horribly. I've got the Murder Strider back in hand to maybe kill something else. Definitely want to try and resolve the Mayhem Devil, since that's a great answer to these Brazen Borrowers. And if they counter this, then... I guess I wouldn't be able to play Corvold this turn, but I can resolve a Wicked Wolf, but there's nothing to fight. 
So it's a little awkward here, not having any food left. I think I'm still just playing Devil here. Alright, get sabotaged. And then I can go for food plus once upon a time. Since I don't think I want to play Wicked Wolf if there's nothing for it to kill. Alright, Preserver, that's scary. Could be worth killing with a Murder Rider while they're tapped out. Then again, it is something I can potentially fight with a Wicked Wolf. So this is a close call. I think I'll let the Preserver resolve. And then take two, cast once upon a time, make a food, and then next turn I can make a move with the Wicked Wolf. Alright, probably want another Mayhem Devil. Make some food. And Vraska could be effective as well. Alright, so I do want to resolve the Mayhem Devil, again as a great answer for these Brazen Borrowers. I also want to resolve the Wicked Wolf. If I were to play the Wicked Wolf, could make it up to a 5-5 potentially, if my opponent um, doesn't force me to use my mana elsewhere. So yeah, we'll play the Mayhem Devil first, I think. And I probably want to keep up uh, some green mana. And if they counter this, I can play my Wicked Wolf to fight the Preserver. And hope they don't have a Quench here. No need to make Wolf Indestructible. Eh, they have uh, another Brazen Borrower to bounce it instead. That'll work. Preserver gets in for two. Now this is all kind of leading up towards a point where my opponent will eventually not have an answer for Corvolds, which can then dominate the game. So I just want to deplete my opponent from any additional counter spells. They've already used quite a few. So I'll lead with Wicked Wolf. If my opponent plays Borrower and pays two for Preserver, then I could still sack the food to make it indestructible and kill Preserver. So that's a good step one. Frilled Mystic to counter it. Sure. And I can make Preserver a 3-3. So now I can resolve Corvolds. Although I won't get a ton of value from this uh, Fabled Passage, sadly, but that's fine. Don't think it matters too much what I get here. We'll get a Forest. And now that my opponent has played all their Brazen Borrowers, they shouldn't have too many answers left. Other than just making the Preserver enormous. But then we can kill it with Murder Strider or Vraska. So Preserver can potentially become a 6-6 here. Alright, Fable Passage is a good one. Extra Murder Strider. Do have to watch out for my life total here, since don't have an infinite uh, supply. So lead with Vraska. And take out Preserver. Your life's about to end. Oh, you're ready. Oh, I've suffered worse. 
and then I can play my Golden Egg, which still keeps up uh, Murder Strider thanks to Gilded Goose. Not a core vault. I don't think I'm attacking, just wanna protect my life total here from these brazen borrowers. So yeah, something like Mayhem Devil would be quite good here. Pawn goes after Vraska. Don't really care if Vraska dies. Just gonna eat one of these uh, Brazen Borrowers for free, as Murder Strider can potentially trade for Frilled Mystic on the ground. Could, like, chum block with a Goose and Murder Strider to save Vraska, but I don't think we need Vraska to win this game. Knowing that my opponent doesn't have any Brazen Borrowers left is definitely a good feeling. So the main card I'm potentially worried about is a 9-pack Ambusher getting out of hand, but with double Murder Strider, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. And yeah, opponent kind of packs it in, unable to get past our giant dragon. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. What about this hand? It's okay, we've got the Golden Egg to potentially make a red mana if we don't draw any red lands. And then, uh, yeah, we've got some lands for... Murder Strider into Wicked Wolf, with Golden Egg also being potential food for the Wicked Wolf. Up against turn 1 Forests. And we see a Gilded Goose or maybe a Pelt Collector. It's gonna be a Gilded Goose. Right, let's just play our Temple. Don't think we need Overgrown Tomb. Could be okay to go with the Wicked Wolf just to have a second green source. But I'm also gonna see a lot of extra cards with all these Golden Eggs. So maybe I would rather dig towards a red land. It's gonna be a tapped Temple Garden into Arboreal Grazer. Putting a Fabled Passage in play. Fair enough. Mayhem Devil could come in handy later. Alright, there's our Stomping Ground. Perfect. So that gives me double green for Wicked Wolf, as well as red mana for Devil and Corvold. Opponent could be playing a powerful Planeswalker here, in which case we've got Murder Shrider lined up. Otherwise I can just play Mayhem Devil. Alright, it's gonna be a Paradise Root, more Ramp. Fable Passage still uh, fetches up a tapped land, it's gonna be an island, so opponent on some sort of banned deck. Could also just keep up Murder Shrider if I expect my opponent to play something like Nissa next turn. But I think I'm okay just running out uh, Mayhem Devil. And then if the Paradise Druid ever gets tapped, we can easily take it out. Uh, there's Nissa. Opponent has to sacrifice a food token in order to play Nissa, and we get to take out Paradise Druid with our Devil, so... That works out just fine. And Murder Strider is ready to take out Nyssa. Don't think I need to trade, although it is kind of appealing to do so when I can take away maybe another mana source soon with the Wicked Wolf, but the Mayhem Devil is probably more valuable still. So I get to play Goose and Murder Shider Nyssa. Playing Wicked Wolf to take out a forest could also be reasonable since I can sack the Golden Egg. Could also take out the Gilded Goose, got a lot of options. But I think I'm just gonna play it safe. Murder Shrider the Nissa. And play the Goose. And then next turn I can just play Corvold potentially, which should help me take over the game. And even if my opponent does have something like Oko to turn Corvold into an Elk, we'll have uh, drawn a card or two beforehand, and yeah, Bone just has to scoop it up. The Mayhem Devil killing the Paradise Root was pretty back-breaking, and we had an answer right away for Nyssa. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a bit of a clunky hand, as we don't have any mana creatures and a 5 and 6 mana card, but we do have Once Upon a Time, so if I can Once Upon a Time into a Goose or 
a uh, Paradise Druid, if the sand could be fine. So it's a bit of a gamble. I think I'll try it. At least my mana's okay. Facing a tapped Steam Vents. Since we could potentially find Goose, I think it is worth it to Once Upon a Time right now. And yep, there it is. Next turn, play Golden Egg to maybe find a 3 or 4 mana play. Interplanar Beacon, so this could be a Jeskai Fires of Invention deck as we see Shimmer of Possibility. Alright, just play a Golden Egg for now. And then set ourselves up for a turn for Korvolds. Narset's a problem since that prevents me from drawing cards with Korvold and with Golden Egg. So not what we wanted to see. And this um, Deafening Clarion also threatens to take out Gilded Goose and slow me down. So yeah, things aren't going very well for me now. Don't really have a great play. Can just play a temple and make a food with Goose. Do I want a backup Goose? Uh, I think I gotta bottom it. Because keeping a Goose doesn't really speed up playing Korvolt. It might help me get Liliana in play a turn sooner. Serpon could have Fires of Invention into Deafening Clarion here. We're gonna Narset first. So maybe they don't have it yet. Well, there it is. Fires, and that's followed by a Drawn from Dreams instead, so opponent ignoring the goose. But they can just go bigger and potentially uh, land some powerful Planeswalkers on me next turn. Probably still gonna run out Korvold here, just to have a way to pressure Narsets. So... Let's play the Mighty Dragon. And I could sacrifice the Goose itself if I'm afraid of Deafening Clarion killing it anyway. Which could be reasonable, but if I keep the Goose then I could potentially play Liana next turn. So it's probably still better to sack the food instead. Narsa denies any card draw. So it's pretty important for Korvold to survive and kill Narset. Sadly, I won't get to draw any cards with Korvold attacking and sacrificing a permanent. So yeah, Narset can really shut down some of our synergies. The fairy can bounce Korvolds. So I gotta hope to just resolve Liliana. And uh, make some zombies. Alright, back up Narsets. If you wish to surrender now, find the thoughtfulness before action. Well, that's a lot of Narset. Yeah, let's just run out Liliana. And at least now if they cast a Deafening Clarion, I'll draw one card from my creatures dying. Still in a lot of trouble. Fires of Invention. Allows my opponent to do some busted things, like Fae of Wishes for powerful sideboard options. So we're definitely super far behind. And there's Sarkon. So now both Planeswalkers can turn into dragons and take out Liliana. That's more like it. And they could still Deafening Clarion afterwards my to kill my zombie and the goose. So you are getting soundly destroyed here. So 
So they did go for the Deafening Clarion before attacking to gain lifelink and gain 8, but that did allow me to draw at least one card while Liliana was still in play. They were probably better off just playing the Clarion after killing Liliana, don't think the 8 life really matters. So yeah, I can play Corvold, don't get to draw any cards, they have a Prison Realm to answer it. And I'm taking at least 12 from the Planeswalkers attacking me, so I'm probably better off just casting Once Upon a Time, hoping to find a Murder Strider to take out Sarkon. That's no Murder Strider, can grab a Mayhem Devil. That doesn't really do much here, so I think I'm out of options at this point. So, good game's opponents. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and only have a 2-lander, but do have a Paradise Druid to make up for it. So, a bit risky if we don't draw the third land, but otherwise, seems okay. Golden Egg gives us a redraw. Can play Castle Tap to turn 1. Let's see what we're up against. Temple of Silence, so maybe some sort of Esper deck. Ooh, Hushbringer. Well, that is annoying against uh, Corvold when it enters the battlefield. It doesn't stop artifacts from uh, doing stuff when they enter the battlefield. My opponent might be combining this with the Troll at 5 mana. I think I'm just gonna play this and say go with a plan of probably casting Murder Strider. Can probably take a hit for one from the Hushbringer first. And Linden. Alright, I guess. Let's see. Do I care about Hushbringer all that much? Yeah, I guess I'll kill it. Pick up Temple, so don't get to play Corvold quite yet, but I get to scry first with Temple and then play Golden Egg. And yeah, I'll take another Paradise Druid, why not? So even if they kill the tapped one, I'll still be able to play Corvold, sag the egg, and get things going. Alright, Aerialists. Plays well with Linden. And even had a gain lands to go with it, so 4-5 Aerialist already. So I could take a turn off, kind of trading off the board. Which might be worth it before playing Corvold, because if I play Corvold, my opponent kills it. Then the Aerialist hits me again, that does start adding up, whereas now I can just Murder Strider plus Rankle, lose a Paradise Druid, and my opponent loses both creatures. That might be better. And then we can start drawing cards with uh, Corvold's afterwards. So each player sacrifices a creature, don't think we want any other modes. And even if they kill Paradise Root, I still have the Golden Egg to make red mana for Corvold. Right, although there's another Hushbringer, so that prevents me from uh, drawing a card when Corvold enters the battlefield, but I guess I don't even have to sacrifice a permanent then, so I guess it's not too bad. Do another Corvold, so won't be discarding with Rankle anytime soon. So yeah, let's just play Corvold. And pass a turn. I'll keep Rankle back in case they kill Corvold. I don't take any damage from their flyers. Alright, a Johnny. It's pretty scary. But my opponent packs it in as uh, Corvold will eventually start taking over here. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, hand looks pretty decent. I've got uh, turn one Goose, once upon a time to maybe find Corvold and get things going. Alright, there we go. 
could be facing a turn one shock, but it's still probably worth it to run out a goose. And then Passage will come into play untapped on four, facing the Cavalcade deck. So if they play Chandra next turn, I'll have Murder Strider to deal with it. Could play Mayhem Devil right now, but probably want to save the food to ramp out Corval the turn sooner. So let's just play Temple, I think. Probably don't need Swamp, even though Painless Lands are nice. And there's Chandra. So I'm gonna take 3 damage since I can block one of the elementals. And then I probably want to just kill Chandra right now. They might have another one, but if I wait, I give them the chance of activating Chandra. I am not happy right now. So yeah, had I kept the swamp, I could have saved myself maybe two points of damage. If the goose survives, we get to play a Corvold. There's Torbran, another scary card. Although I guess uh, Rankle's a good answer. Alright, so change of plan. We'll just uh, rankle here. And then I don't mind discarding a land. Sacrifice a creature. And then I can just discard a Fabled Passage. And I think I'm okay sacking the Goose. Even though Goose is nice against a red deck as it can eventually Gain 3 life per turn. Keeping Rankle in case I have another Torbran could be useful instead of a war boss. So now Rankle doesn't look great, but it can still be a 3 3 on defense. Right, let's get uh, Corvold in play, I think. Alternatively, I guess I can play Mayhem Devil. Yeah, that's probably better. So yeah, I have a lot of options this turn, but going Mayhem Devil and then. Play Fabled Passage. Sank this to get, I guess, a forest. Deal one to the war boss. And then sank the food to gain some life. And take out war boss. Alternatively, I could have killed a token and then sacrificed a creature with Rankle to kill the uh, war boss. But this seems okay. And again, I'm probably fine with the discard mode. Discarding the golden egg. Keep Corvold. And then I have Mayhem Devil on defense. Put on discards a shock. Which could have taken out Mayhem Devil after I blocked with it. Sank and Cavalcade. Token attacks. Yeah, I'll block. Get to play Corvolds after playing, I guess, a tapped Overgrown Tomb. Deal one to my opponents. Draw a card. Liliana's a great curve topper. And how much do I need to keep back? I think I'll just send Rankle, and I'm probably okay discarding again. Don't think I'll need Liliana. Put on discards another Chandra. Tin three Dodger. That's uh, three damage, but we can easily kill them next turn. All right, so we were able to kind of dismantle the Monorad Cavalcade draw by answering the Planeswalker and then the Torbran, and then eventually taking over the game with our powerful late-game threats.
All right, sweet. So that's going to wrap things up for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.